Alrighty guys, Madman Mandela coming at you live from the Garden Devil Ranch here in beautiful Alabama, where we're not actually live, we're recording this, okay? Alrighty, now, okay, if you all know me and you know my streams and everything, okay, I always do a guide how to set this thing up, and then, uh, you know, just buying customers consoles and all that kind of good stuff. That's getting long, okay? I mean, each video is, is taking like up to an hour, which is like, you know, we're over an hour, which is crazy. So, what I decided to do was, is we're going to do a, a video here of how to get this thing online for the first time for all of the consoles that have been bought and purchased from me, as well as, you know, if you get a console from somebody else or whatever, you don't know how to set it up, well, this will help you, okay? How to get it online for the first time. We're going to also go over Aurora, we're going to go over uh, Dash Launch XM360, all right? Uh, the mods that are that come available on my consoles all right and uh you know a basic overview of how to set it up how to get it online and how to have fun with it all right so needless to say we're going to start this off here all right as you can see this is a customer's console right here this is andre taylor's okay and uh you know it's going to be shipped out today and uh, i'm using it here to do this video so here we go all right first off when you boot it up you're going to come to Aurora, okay? Now, you know, Aurora here, in plain, simple English, is a dashboard that has been around for a long time. Its predecessor was FSD Dash, okay? If you remember that, okay? Brought to us by all the boys over at, uh, over at the Real Mod Scene, okay? A very versatile Dash, works really well, okay? And, um, you know, offers a lot of rich features, okay? So... We're going to go through this, and I'm going to start off with showing you Aurora, okay? Now, this is going to be a basic guide, all right? There's a lot more to it than what I'm going to be going over, but, you know, I don't want to, like, carry on for, like, three hours on this thing. So, okay, without further ado, hitting the back button, and you'll notice everything here are is all your settings right here. It's all, it's all your selections, okay? So, if we hit the back button, you will see we have our file manager, our scripts, we start, we boot, and shut down. Of course, we have our IP address. That's our local area IP address. It's not our public, of course. All right, now, like um, in scripts, if you select scripts, well, there you are. You know, these are scripts that are downloaded already, okay, for your Aurora. Now, you can go ahead and you can go to the Aurora repo browser, and if you see anything that you like, you can select it, of course, and it'll show some stuff here, last played, release date, title id okay so on and so forth all right you can go to uh filters all right these are all developers hide connect multi-disc all that kind of good stuff all right so on and so forth your subtitles all right these are scripts offline flag you know game data pass all this stuff here and then you have utility scripts okay and these are all utilities that you can of course download to this thing and uh you know add to aurora too even enrich it even more all right we'll back out of here okay now all right file manager simple okay it's a uh, left right deal here okay you got a left window if you hit the rb button you'll have the right window okay like uh you know you know just to show you give you an example there's hcd1 okay and there's hcdx all right so there you are and that's where your compatibility files are Okay, so as you can see, two different windows, okay, two different worlds, copying and pasting is all right here, okay, you got uh, paste, copy, cut, del delete, you know, rename, and make a new directory, alright, so very, very simple file manager, alright, so on and so forth, alright, now, hitting the start button, business end of this thing, you got your assets, where you can download, where you can re-download them or whatever if you have to, you have your profile, content, and these are the paths where all the stuff is right here. All your games, your homebrew, and everything the way I set it up, all right? Modules, dash launch, FTP server, Nova, so on and so forth. This link, all right? Your language, security, and about. Pretty simple. Okay, now, all right. Hitting RB or LB will bring up a context menu along here. As you can see, we're in the show all section. Now we'll go to the Xbox 360 section, okay? All of your games for your Xbox 360 are right here. All right, hitting RB again. Xbox Live Arcade. 
or your live arcade, so on and so forth. Your homebrew section, where your tools reside. Your classic games. Your indie games. Your emulators. And we're back to show off. Alright, so, you know, pretty much that's the overview of what's on this hard drive right here. So, if we hit our B, we bring it over to Xbox 360. Now, all of this down here applies, okay? So, let's say, okay, you go into Battlefield 4, alright? Let's say you want to, you know, B is going to be for view, alright? You can show hidden titles, all this stuff here, quick view. Alright, you can add your theme, skin display so on and so forth okay now let's say you want to go ahead and you want to download a title update or you want to see if there's a trainer in this thing or whatever well it's real easy details hitting y okay now if you look up here last play never all right now you'll notice here in on the d-pad that there's a little arrow that means that there's more okay so d-pad left all right that's going to go ahead and that's going to be this is going to be like um for your trainers Okay, so on and so forth. We hit it again. Settings. If you want a settings override, you know, dash launch settings. Okay, to activate, so on and so forth. So you can tailor this thing to whatever you want to do. Okay, so you got fake live license patching, all that kind of good stuff. If you understand what that is, well then, you know, I mean, use it. All right. But anyway, that's just settings override when you launch the game. All right. Over here, going down here, title updates. Okay, hitting A. All right. So we hit A. Now, you'll notice that there is a title update already, alright? It's already been done. All of my consoles come with their title updates installed, alright? Now, let's say you want to play on Link or something and play with a, with a group that's playing off of a different title update. Well, you can. You can go to Unity, and as you can see, there's other versions, as you can see, that you can download and enable. They will show up in installed, and you can disable one and enable another. It's pretty easy, alright? We'll back out of here, alright? Now... DLC. If there's any DLC, it's going to show it. There's some DLC right there. Okay? And we can launch it or whatever. Back out of there. Alright, now, you have achievements. Save games. Alright? Now, preview, screen captures, refresh, and that's a refresh the artwork, download cover. Comes in very handy. Alright? Let's say you have a, uh, let's say you want a different cover on it. Well, you can. You hit A, and it will these people have have made these covers for these things these are custom covers okay so that you can change the cover on it if you want all right and give it a different look okay so that's what that is now rename hide and delete okay stay away from delete please okay unless you want the game deleted of course you know but anyway hiding it you can hide it it'll still be there but it won't show up in the um in, in the listing catalog all right so on and so forth and rename okay pretty much very simplistic all right now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to some tools all right the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go over to uh dash launch okay now dash launch some people i mean you know there are still people out there that don't even know how to use this okay uh there's new people coming into the scene that you know and yes it's 2021 i know this but there's new people coming into the scene Otherwise, I wouldn't be here if, you know, if there wasn't. So, you know, here we go. All right. Now, look. Your instructions, if you leave it alone, will we'll go ahead and show up here. Select, quit, X, clear paths, launch, you know, load the any, save the any, you know, miscellaneous, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, to, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to expand on this by hitting A. And that's your paths right there. If you notice, the default is Aurora. That means that it, that this thing boots right directly into Aurora. Okay, it doesn't boot to the stock dashboard. If you hold down button B while it's booting, it's going to boot into FX menu. Okay, because FX menu is included on here. All right. If you hit that, if you hold down button Y, okay, that's your stock dashboard. That'll bring you to the stock dashboard. Okay, and every setting here has its description and what it does right here. Okay. So on and so forth. So, you know, I mean, it, you know, everything's explained within it. You just have to understand it. All right. Now, what we'll do is we will collapse this. Okay. By hitting A, we'll go to behavior. All right. Now, behavior, 
if you don't know what you're doing in here, stay out of it, all right? There's no reason for you to be in there. It's already set up and ready to go. But, you know, I mean, if you know what you're doing and you want to, like, your content patch, XBLA patch, license patch, so on and so forth, all that stuff is right here. So if you're doing anything crazy or anything like that, you can, okay? Region spoof, the region, you know, auto shut, auto off, all that, okay? Shut temps, all that stuff is all right there, okay? So you can change it whatever you like. But for the most part, it already comes set up. You don't have to mess with it, okay? So we'll collapse that. Network very important okay first off these all need to be red so we just hit a and we turn it red all right now i'm going to tell you right now if you try to hook up online and you have a problem where it says live block live strong well that would be these these three right here that would cause well these two right here will cause it not it will, will cause it to fail okay live block and live strong okay xhttp if that is if that is green you won't be able to sign into live okay so you know, I'm going to tell you right now, after you get this thing online, come in here and make sure none of these are green. If they are green, like that, you're not going to connect to live. Okay, so make sure they are red. All right? Now, you have no net store, dev link, sock patch, fake live, auto, auto fake, auto content, auto fake, zero, one, two, three. There's a whole bunch of settings in here. Okay, when auto fake is enabled, when then whenever the title ID is played, fake live will be temporarily disabled. Okay, so on and so forth. All right, so everything has a description. So, you know, if you're looking for a description, there it is. Now, timers, this is for your hard drive. You can keep the HDD, uh, you can keep the HDD alive. You can enable that, so that way then it stays alive instead of, like, shuts down and goes into standby mode and all that if you want. You know, your temp board, temp casting and all that. If you don't know what this is, you know, I mean, heck, you know, you know, don't mess around with it. All right. Your plugins, very important. Okay. Now, have you noticed XBDM? Never remove XBDM. That is your local area network connection. If you remove XBDM, you won't be able to connect to this thing through neighborhood. Okay. It's that so. Don't remove that. Leave it alone. It always goes in plugin one. Plugin two is your server. Now, whether you're on Alliance server, which is my server, or you're on Ninja or whatever, that's where your server goes. Okay. XDR PC that is used to put multiple menus on this uh, on this machine, okay, in a text file. So you're not using up all your plugins, okay? Now Aurora Crash Patcher that stops Aurora from crashing because, <coughs> excuse me, Xbox and their Infinite Wisdom, I do believe, decided to go to SSL with their CDNs, and of course, that's the reason why we were getting exception errors when a damn thing would download stuff and it keep crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing, okay? So, needless to say, keep that in there if you're using Aurora and you're downloading stuff, okay? Plug-in 5, okay? We're using a mod menu called the Purge for GTA 5, okay? That's where that goes, all right? You can put your mod menus in wherever you want, various plugins, so on and so forth. All depends on what you're trying to do and what game you're trying to mod, all right? Now, we'll collapse that. Configurator, okay? FTP server. Now, we don't have to enable this because it's already enabled in Aurora, so we don't even have to mess around here. But if you want to, you can enable it, okay? Your Fahrenheit, that needs to be enabled, okay? Uh, you, you know, your Cal, uh, Cal Launch, if enabled, install, will start the launch menu instead of the options, okay? Up server, if enabled, XE build will update the server where uh, will be started. Only runs while the installer is running, okay? FTP port, that always stays port 21 for FTP. FTP server, you could turn it on, turn it off, okay? No big deal. So we'll collapse that. All right, now, when you want to save your settings, you will hit RB, okay? You will go ahead. You will go down to HDD, all right? You will see a little green circle there where the launch any is, all right? You just hit X to save it. That's it. And then you go ahead, you hit B to back out, all right? Very simple, okay? And now it's going to go ahead. It's going to run Aurora, okay? It's going to go back. There's Aurora coming up, okay? Now, we're good there. Okay, now I'm going to show you here one other thing with Dash Launch here as well. Okay, just to show you. All right, now here's what's going to happen here. When I hit the LB button, it's going to give me launch so I can launch a container or XEX. All right, system information, unload Dash Launch, uninstall, update patches, install this, and quit. Okay, so you know, like I said, there's more settings here that you can play with. Okay, like, uh, 
your system information, so on and so forth, okay? So on, there it is, okay? And you can go down, whatever, hit B, and then you just back out of here, you're good, all right? So, you know, you just save your settings or whatever, all right? And uh, like I said, everything has an explanation to it. Now it's going to boot back up into Aurora, okay? Now, now that we went through that, okay, I'm going to show you how to get this thing online for the first time, okay? Which is very, very, very important, all right? Now, please follow this, because if you don't follow this to the T, you're not going to get it online, okay? And what's going to happen is, it's going to act like it's online, but it's not going to be online, okay? And you're going to wind up with a mess, and, you know, you, I just want you to be able to play this thing without having a heartache, okay? So I'm going to show you how to get this thing online for the first time, all right? So, now look, let's say you get this thing out of the box, okay? Everything is cool, all right? You don't just power it on and go, okay? I'm going to show you what you have to do, all right? Here's what we got to do here. So, you just got it out of the box, okay? It's never been powered on. Let me turn it off, okay? Now, okay, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to open up the drive door. You're going to pull the hard drive out. This is the easiest way to set this thing up, okay? Lay it up there. Now, plug your power supply in. Plug your HDMI cord in, get your controller ready, and sync it, of course, once you power it on. Now, we go ahead, we power the system on, okay? Now, we'll go ahead, we'll sync the controller up. And then what we're going to do here is then we go ahead, we hit the sync button on the front of the console. And then we hit the little button on the, uh, on the uh, controller, and it's all synced up. The system booted, okay? Now, here's the deal. You're going to boot the stock dashboard. You're not going to have any fancy stuff or anything like that. You're just going to have the stock dashboard, okay? There we are. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to go over. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to system, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to network settings, okay? Now, as you can see, my Wi-Fi is already, it already picked it up, okay? Look. Your Wi-Fi is going to pop up over here somewhere, okay, because it's going to scan, okay, it's going to find your Wi-Fi, and you're going to hook up to it and put your password in, okay? When you do that, what's going to happen is, is it's going to automatically test the Xbox Live connection just like this, all right? So, we're testing, all right, and that's what we got. We got a check mark, and we got two red X's, very important. This check mark right here is the most important thing that you need to get. We got to establish a connection to the router first before we can get here and here. And we don't want to go here and here without a stealth server on, which happens to be on the hard drive. Because if you do that, you know, uh, when the challenges do come back up, uh, your KB will be instantly banned because this thing is going to broadcast, hey, look at me, I'm a modified bootloader, okay? So you don't want to do that. <laughs> so that's the reason why... This is Dash Launch doing its job. Like I said, failed Xbox Live Strong, well, Xbox Live, and blocked Xbox Live Strong. Okay, those two are now enabled, and they're green, as I stated before, in Dash Launch. Okay, so that's good. That's what we want. Now, once we have that connection, and it's done here, now you just power it off. Okay? Now, once you power it off, turn off, take the hard drive, slip it in. It'll see it with a click. Make sure you feel it or you hear it, okay? If it doesn't click in there, okay, you, you, you're going to boot to the stock dashboard again, okay? So make sure it's seated. Then close the drive door. The most important part of this thing is pulling this power supply out and leaving it out for five minutes. If you do not do that, what's going to happen is it's not going to flush the TCP buffers, Okay, and you're going to wind up where it connects to the internet, yes, it'll connect to my server, yes, but you will not connect to live. Not cool, all right? So you got to leave this out for five minutes to flush the buffers out, okay? The, only, the reason why we have to do that is there's capacitors in here. They stay charged, okay? That south bridge is getting five volts. It's getting five volts right now as we speak, okay? And the reason we have to let it sit for five minutes is to discharge the capacitor so it's completely dead. All right, that way that it resets the MAC address, it resets everything when you start the console up, okay? So we leave this out for five minutes. Now, me, 
I can plug it back in because it's already on my network. So the credentials are right. I don't have to worry about that. But you do. Okay? So you leave it out for five minutes. Me? I'm going to start the damn thing up. All right? So now we're going to start it up. Okay? Now what's going to happen is, is the system's going to boot. Let me go ahead and sync my controller up. Okay? And now go ahead to the screen here. And as you can see, it booted. Okay? Which is good. Now, and forgive my camera cap my, my, my camera abilities, I am not a cameraman, okay? And I'm using a crappy little camera, okay, with a crappy little mic, all right, but I'm trying to get my point across. You see the green stuff would stop moving? That means it locked up to the internet. Now it's loading Aurora. You see your plugins come in. We're halfway through the battle, okay? Life is grand. And mind you, you only have to do this once, unless you leave your house and bring it to another house with a different internet connection. If you do that, then you have to go through this again. And then when you go back to your house, you're going to have to go through it again. All right? But if it's going to stay at the house, you know, in your house and not go anywhere, you only have to do it once. Okay? So now, as you can see, we're up. Aurora's good. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Xbox 360 dashboard. All right? Now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to fire that up. Now, this is going to take us to the original dash. Now... As you can see, all right, there we are. Life is good so far. We're going to go ahead, and what we're going to do is we're going to bypass this by hitting back, and we're going to make sure that it's online, okay? And as you can see, it is online. The KV is good, so on and so forth. If I hit the guide button, you will see KV is on day one. You'll have 30 days, Andre. Don't worry. I'll take care of that. But that gives you your reserve days on the server, okay? Now, as you can see, there's our guide over in our fifth tab. We have our off hosts, which are known as cheats, okay? They're off the host, all right? You, now, these these cheats can be used online, playing with people, okay, and all that kind of good stuff. To disable them, hit A. To enable them, hit A. Very simplistic, okay? Now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to make sure, though, that, you know, that we're going to get online, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we're going to back out of here. Now, we'll go over here. We'll go to sign in or sign out, okay? We'll go ahead and go to sign in. Now, if you already have a retail profile, you can put it on here, but I'm just going to tell you right now. If you do that, okay, and you go into BO2 or you go into Advanced Warfare or you go into GTA 5 and you start acting like a maniac, people can report your profile. If they do that, you can lose it, all right? So if you have a profile that you got money into, that you've had forever and you want to keep it, do not put it on an RGH. Leave it on your retail, all right, and mod it from a distance if you want. That way then it's safe, okay? So what I'm going to tell you to do is this. I want you to go to xbox.com slash live, all right? Now, when you go there, you're going to go ahead, and what you're going to do is you're going to make an account on there. You're going to use Outlook for the email credentials. You're going to use a real phone number. Okay, so that way in case they want to go ahead and see if it's a spam account and they want to verify it, they can. All right, so you'll get a, you'll get a text, you get a text from, you know, Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. You okay and everything is cool. You make your account, think up your silly name and your silly modders password and all that other crap, okay? Make the account. Then come back here and download the profile, all right? All you got to do is just go to the download right here. You make the account on your computer. Download the profile, you're all good to go, all right? Now, when you download it, a little white box is going to come up and say downloading, okay? Now, let's say I want to sign in, all right? Now, we're signed in, life is good, okay, everything is wonderful. Now, if for some reason it doesn't download, okay, and you're sitting at that download box for five minutes, then what happened was is it got corrupted during the download process. That's what happened, Okay. And they have an uncanny way of not telling you that. So, what you must do, if you have that problem, and this is only if you have a problem downloading the profile, okay, if you hit B, back out of it, and come to the screen here. I'm going to show you how to fix it. And this is only if you have a problem with your profile downloading to the machine. Up, over, settings, system, storage, okay? Now... We're going to go ahead, we're going to go into the hard drive right here, all right? Now, you'll look under the profiles right here. 
underneath this profile right here, okay, is going to be the profile that you tried to download that is corrupt. Highlight it, select it with A, delete it, and get rid of it because it's no good. All right? Then back out of this, back out of this. All right? Then what you're going to do is after you back out of that, you're going to leave that hard drive highlighted right there. You'll see Y, device options, hit Y. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and we're going to clear the system cache. Do it twice. So that's once. Yes. And then we're going to hit Y again and we're going to do it one more time. to make sure it's clear. And we're good. Then we're going to back out of here and we're going to back out of here. We're going to go up. We're going to go over. We're going to go to social. We're going to go to sign in and sign out. And then you re-download the profile. Once it downloads, life is grand. Okay? In which it will. Hit the guide button. Go back to Aurora. Okay? Pretty simplistic so far, right? I would hope. <laughs> okay. Now that we did that, there's another tool that you're going to become intimate with. Okay? And uh, it's XM360. Now, it's right here in Show All. All right? It's also located under the homebrew section, as you can see. All right? Now... NAND Flasher, Flasher NAND, and all that kind of good stuff, you, you don't really have to worry about unless we have a dashboard update, okay? In which, if you do have a dashboard update, for everyone that has bought consoles from me, okay? If we have a dashboard update, you don't even have to mess with that if you don't want to, if you feel uncomfortable with it or whatever, okay? Because you can't brick your NAND. You can't brick this console pretty easily, okay? If you don't know what the hell you're doing, all right? So, if that's the case where we get an update, it's not a big deal. There will be an XE build made for it. And what will happen is, is I have each and everybody's NAND on file. Okay, I have them stored in like five different locations where they're safe. Okay, now you can message me and say, hey, Tony, listen, I'm waiting for the update. As soon as the XE build comes out, okay, with the new dash launch, I will go ahead and update your NAND, send it to you. All you have to do is just flash it to the console and you're done. You don't have to worry about messing around and building it and everything else, okay? Because it will be done, period, okay? So you got nothing to worry about there. Now, going back to this tool right here, XM360, okay? Now, this little gem goes ahead and unlocks a whole bunch of stuff, which is kind of important, all right? And I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start it up. Okay, now it's going to have a black screen here for a minute because it's actually scanning through the entire hard drive to find everything that's on the damn hard drive, okay? And, you know, if you're downloading DLC from, like, a torrent site or a website, you put a new game on or something like that, all right? When you do that, you've got to be able to put it in the, media, in, in the content folder, title, media ID, and all that stuff. When you put DLC in there, this stuff sometimes doesn't come unlocked. Hence, the padlocks right here, okay? Now, as you can see, they're all unlocked already, all right? So, that's good. But what I want you to do, for my peace of mind and your peace of mind, so that way I know, okay, that you know what you're doing with this thing, okay? I'm going to show you how to work this tool, all right? When you, I said tool, haha, <laughs> okay, anyway, look, if you download, you know, downloadable content, put it in the correct content folder, you got to come here and make sure it's unlocked, okay? Now, how are we going to do that? Well, after we run this initially, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and we're going to run rescan and make sure we scan everything into the hard drive, okay? Because now we'll be able to see it, all right? Just, you know, it's me. I don't trust machines. <laughs> Look at Microsoft. They trusted in their security. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it found everything, okay? Now, look. Bring this over. With the D-pad, unlock all your XBLA and A. Okay? Zero files are unlocked. That's good. That means everything's already unlocked. All right? Go to show DLC. Hit A. Okay? Now, there's all your DLC. Now, you can go to all. You can pick just for Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Ghosts, you know, so compatibility, as you can see, all this stuff. But we're going to leave this at all. I'm going to make it real simple. Okay? Go over here. Unlock DLC. Hit A. Okay? Good. Once we're done, exit the dash. It is that simple. All right? And so if you download DLC, you download a new game, you get something, whatever, 
come here and unlock the son of a bitch. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a mess on your hands, okay? It ain't going to work right, okay? Pretty easy, all right? Now, now that that's all done, said, and done with, okay, and we understand this stuff here, all right, now what I'm going to do here, just to show you some mods, okay? Now, this is an offline profile that I have on this thing right now, okay? And I have that for a reason. There's no reason to connect to Xbox Live with, with the live profile right now. We're on live. It's just that this is an offline profile. It makes life simpler for me, especially with the game saves and stuff that I have on this thing, okay? So, we'll go through first what we'll do, okay? As I mentioned before, our off hosts, okay? We have off hosts for Advanced Warfare, BO2, Ghost, MW3, so on and so forth. We got them coming for BO3. We got them coming for MW2. Uh, you know, th those are coming. All right. You know, I mean, we just, uh, you know, like I said, we work normal jobs. We don't have, you know, all the time in the world to, you know, be able to do this. But, you know, like I said, I try. All right. So anyway. All right. Advanced Warfare is a off host to its own. Okay. We're going to start up Advanced Warfare. Okay. Now, Advanced Warfare should start up. You'll see Advanced Warfare is bypassed, okay, so on and so forth. And now we'll go ahead, we'll hit Start. We're going to press Start, okay. I'm going to go into Multiplayer, all right, and this thing will take me to Multiplayer, and you're going to see, you know, it bypassed once again. And then you will see Alliance Cheats are loaded, okay. As I said, these are the cheats, okay. Now, all right. Cheats are loaded. Everything is all cool. All right. We're going to go ahead. We're going to do local play. Just for the hell of it. A, reading save device. Okay. A, so on and so forth. All right. And then what we're going to do is, okay, is then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hold in the left trigger and push down the left D-pad. And there is our magic menu that just popped up. Okay. You can use A to select. We're going to turn all of this crap on. Okay. All of this stuff works too, all right? But however, though, we're just going to use this stuff right here. Then we're going to hit B to back out of that. We're going to go into the aimbot sub menu right here. We're going to hit, we're going to select it with A. You have ADS mode, you have silent mode, okay? Best bone, no spread, which we don't want the bullets to spread around, okay? And we have auto wall for a wall banger, okay? Auto fire, it will automatically fire for you, okay? I don't know how easy you can get with that, but you know, it is what it is, all right? Then we'll back out of here. Anti-aim, okay? We could do a spin bot, okay? Which means he will hold up a right shield while he's getting shot at. Fast 360, which means he'll be acting like a complete idiot. Okay, jitter, where we'll be jittering around all over the damn place. And we're back to off, okay? So you can turn the spin bot on. You can put a right shield on. You can also use fake lag. Fake lag, what that does is intentionally drops packets. So then that way then you become like jerky worky through the whole game. And it makes it almost nearly impossible for somebody to shoot you. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, hey, it works, okay? You know, I mean, but we're going to leave that off for right now. All right, no reason to have that on. We're back out of here. ESP, okay? We're going to turn that on. Okay, we're going to, you now 3D box are going to go around the people. We're going to draw the bone lines out. We're going to draw the name. We're going to draw the distance. And then we're going to draw the weapon. And then we're going to go to snap lines, okay? Now, you're going to use your T-pad. Bottom, center. Top, off, bottom. Snap line mode. All players. Enemy. Friendly. All players. Crosshairs. We're going to do hit crosshairs. We can also do spread crosshairs. That makes it a little bigger so you can see the pattern of the spread. But we're going to use crit, uh, hit crosshairs uh, for this uh, little demonstration here. All right. Now, we'll back out of here. Okay. Players. When you're in a game, okay, it's going to show players and you can mark them. And so then that way then you can hunt them down and kill them if you want. Settings, okay, field of view, brings it out, okay, brings it out big time, okay, as you can see, but we're going to set this at 85 for right now, move the menu, okay, now when you select that, okay, it stays on, and you can move the menu wherever you want to put it, okay, it doesn't really matter, wherever you want to put it, that's where this thing is going to be, okay, so on and so forth, and then you hit A again to disable it, so that way then you can cycle through the menu. Now, we'll hit B to back out of there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the aim body here because I'm going to show something else while I'm in the game. So that way it goes to that, alright? So, 
Now, hold in the left trigger, push down the left D-pad, and, you know, menu's gone. Alright? Now, I'm going to set up a game here. I'm going to put one friendly bot. And I'll use the rest of them six, and I'll make them hardened. What the hell? Okay, and we'll back out of here. We'll start the game. Alright, now the game should start. Okay, and as you all know, you've seen this online as well. Okay, on a bunch of my YouTube videos, you know. So I played it online, and I played it in this mode too. Because this mode makes it a little simpler for me. Alright, so, Sentinel, yeah. And then we'll grab hold of a gun. Where the hell's my gun? I want my gun, damn it. Yeah. Okay, I'll use this one. What the hell? Okay? So on and so forth. All right. Now, okay, we'll run around here. And as you can see, everybody in there, either your orange or your enemy, your green is good. Red means pull the trigger. And, of course, um, purple is a wall banger, as you can see. So on and so forth. Uh oh Oh, you bitch. All right. Now, you know, it gives you a little bit of an advantage here. See, this guy is running around here. In the face. So on and so forth. And, uh, you know, as I said, when they turn red, you can pull the trigger. Now, this is one of them. Whoop, wall banger. And it will prioritize who is going to be the biggest threat to you. Okay, first. Alright? And it will prioritize the target when you're holding it on the left trigger on, on the left trigger now I'm gonna show you another little mod here okay holding the left trigger push down the left d-pad okay bring this out to silent put it on auto fire okay hold in the left trigger push down on the, uh, on the left uh, on the left d-pad and we'll go up here and it automatically starts to shoot everybody and as you can see we can jump around we don't even have well, we, can, we don't even have to aim okay it's silent Okay, so as you can see, it all works really, really well. Okay, then we can grab hold of this, these two right here. And now we can really screw some people up. Okay, there you go. And we're just jumping around and we're getting headshots, headshots, long shot, strafe, headshot, so on and so forth. Okay, you know, I mean, you know, like I said, we'll go ahead and we'll reload. There we go. Okay. And now we're all good to go, and of course, everybody's going to die, alright? So anyway, as you can see, the all post works really, really well, alright? Now that's that's the advanced warfare all post, okay? That's to its own, alright? Now, we're going to go back home here, okay? And now what we're going to do here is we're going to boot back up into Aurora, alright? Then what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we're going to use bo2 for an example okay because bo2 has an all post as well as jiggy and sentinel which are gsc menus okay that's why we're going to use bo2 for this example here now these cheats here for bo2 ghosts and um uh mw3 are all the same all right so and they, they operate a little differently than the advanced uh, warfare all post you know, but we're going to be migrating advanced warfare of us, but for now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start up BO2. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Now BO2 is started, okay, BO2 is bypassed, life is good, so on and so forth, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to start this up, okay? Now, I'm going to explain to you how to use the, uh, the, um, GSC menus in this thing as well as the all posts. So we're going to hit start. Alright. I'm going to press start again. Okay? Now. Alright. We're going to come up to this thing. We're going to go to multiplayer. Alright. Again, I'm just going to do use a local game. Okay? So here we are. BO2 is bypassed once again. You'll see BO2 cheats are loaded. We'll do a local game right here. There you go. We'll do a little local game. We'll set up the bots. We'll do none of them. Okay? Now. Alright. Now, as I said, Jiggy is for multiplayer BO2, Sentinel is for zombies, okay? Now, I'm going to show you Jiggy. Jiggy, you hold in the left trigger, push down on the right thumbstick. That's going to open the Jiggy menu up, all right? Now, I'm going to explain how to use it. So, we're going to start the match here, all right? And 
And once the game starts, I'm going to hold it in the left trigger and push down on the right thumbstick. That's going to open up Jiggy. All right, you're going to use A to select and X to back out. Grab hold of that, hold on the left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, there you go. All right, I'm going to go to main mods, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to quick mods, and all the mods are going to turn on over here. You're going to see what's going on, and that gives you God mode and all that kind of good stuff really quick, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit X to back out of that menu and go back to this menu here. Okay, now look, if you're online and you want to use Jiggy online, you must go into a session just like I did, okay, my own session while you're in the while you're online. Go down to host only. Okay? Now, once you go to host host only, you'll see force host. Alright? You would select that with A. You must force the host. Then you back out of the lobby and then you go into a public lobby. Alright, you will be the host. It takes longer to get people in, you know. Because it's looking for the closest games around you. It's looking for the closest people around you. All right. So, you know, you, if you force the host, be prepared to wait there for a little while for your lobby to fill up. Okay. Just telling you. All right. And you're going to hit A and just force the host. Then just back out of the game completely. Go into a public session and you'll have Jiggy online. All right. Pretty simple. Now we'll back out of here. Okay. Now we'll do some mods to the bullets. We'll use swarms and grenades. And explosive bullets and hunter killers and uh we'll add dog bullets and flare bullets to really burn them all the freak to hell and back all right now we'll hit x to back out of that menu and hit x to back out of that now okay the off host the pad left simple off host now this you don't have to go and force the host or anything this you can just go into a game and play it okay so we're going to use x to select we're going to turn this on this 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 and this then we're going to open up the aimbot menu. We're going to turn that on. We're going to go ahead. We're going to go on screen. I don't want to use the auto aim feature. That's crazy. ESP. We'll go ahead. We'll grab all that. We'll put pyramids around them. This, this, and this. And we'll add snap lines. Okay. Misc menu. Yes. Scroll mark, watermark, draw on, off, show host. And you could actually end the game if you want to. Okay. So we'll back out of here. We'll stand up and then we'll hit D pad left to close it. All right. Now we'll go out here. When they turn blue, let them have it. And. I'm flying through the air, of course, with the aid of the Jiggy menu, along with my uh, along with my off post on this damn thing, and pretty much I'm laying waste to everything and everybody around here. Now, if you want to be a complete penis with fingers, okay, hold on left trigger, push down the right thumbstick, go to aimbot, go to unfair aimbot. Now you shoot through building schools and everything else, get automatic headshots, and pretty much you're pissed off the entire lobby. Don't do what I do online, please, unless somebody deserves it, okay? Other than that, you know, I mean, mod, mod right, okay? And besides that also, they can report your profile for doing this crazy shit, and, you know, you wind up, you know, losing your profile, okay? So anyway, that's Jiggy and the off host for uh, BO2. Uh, and, you know, I mean, and the off host, again, for MW3 and Ghosts, all right? Now, all right. Now, let's say we're done there, yes? And now we want to go and we want to run Zombies, okay? So we'll run Zombies. Zombies has a sentinel menu. It's kind of like Jiggy, but not. Okay? Different commands, different controls. Okay? So, we'll do a little local game. Real quick. And here we are. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll do transit. We'll hit that. We'll start the match. Now, for sentinel, hold in left trigger, push down on the right thumbstick. Okay? That's going to go ahead and that's going to open up the sentinel menu. All right? So we're loading. And there we are. Okay. Now, hold the left trigger. Push down on the uh, on the right thumbstick. There you are. We're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead. We're going to hit X. X to select. We're going to use God Mode. Infinite Ammo. Alright. We'll use Unlimited Sprint. Double speed, speed and no click. Okay. And then we'll toggle the aimbot. Alright. Now, we will go ahead. We will push in on the right thumbstick. To back out of that sub menu and come back to the main menu we're going to go to the weapons menu we're going to hit x okay now we'll pick a uh we'll pick a gun that usually works very very well like an rpg okay because we're in god mode we ain't got to worry about getting ourselves blown up all right and then what we'll do we'll push in on the right thumbstick bring that back out and then we'll push it on the right thumbstick to get rid of the menu right there now we'll run around here we'll wake up the freaking zombies yo wakey wakey eggs and bakey come on wake up get up you lazy mother 
Yeah, that's it. There you go. Oh, dearie me, I got a whole bunch of them coming at me. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and now, when in doubt, pull it out and just let them have it, okay? And pretty much, everybody's dead, okay? No problems, all right? So, there you go. Now, to reopen Jiggy, I mean, excuse me, Sentinel, left trigger, push in the right thumbstick, okay? You've got the, uh, you got personal mods, weapons menu, fun menu. You know, fun menu is like save, load position, jetpack, ricochet, bullets, portal gun, black hole gun, velocity gun, so on and so on. Fuck you. Um, bad breath anyway. Okay? Rail gun, ray gun, trampoline mode. Yay! Look at me bounce, okay? We can hit that. Now we're bouncing around all over the damn place. Look at this go. Okay? Needless to say. Yeah. So, that's enough for trampoline mode. Okay? Now, we got bounce traps. You can set up all kinds of crazy stuff here. Real player grenades, perma destroying machines, so on and so forth. Okay, now we'll back out of here. Okay, you got your models menu, you know, and player, bus driver, so on and so forth. Other models, all that crap. Back out of here. Forge menu, animated model, forge tools, so on. Storefront, door, window, you do whatever you want. Okay, your zombies menu, spawn zombies, kill zombies, teleport to crosshair, so on and so forth really okay there you go all right there happy now okay teleport to me make all crawl super melee so on change run speed change zombies model so on and so forth all right like i said you got a full you got a full menu here to screw around with all right it's been around for a long time it works really good here's some there hope you like that there you go so anyway there you are all right now We'll go ahead. We'll get out of here. Okay. Now, back to Aurora. Okay. College football revamped. Okay. That's seems to be a lot of people's favorite. All right. Now, they just dropped V12. And yes, this console has it on there. Okay. Just like I did for all the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. You, you have version V12 on here. Okay. Now. What you got to do here, all right, is we'll start it up. Let me find it here. There we are, NCAA for Football 14, okay? So we'll start it up, and you will see College Football Revamp. And yes, it's going to load. And here we are. It doesn't start up like the normal EA way, okay? And like I said, you'll see College Football Revamp, okay? It's got all the latest teams, colors, jerseys, all that crap. It's got the downloadable content already installed in the folder where it needs to be. Okay, and like I said, this is version 12. They just came out with this yesterday, actually last night. So, you know, I mean, I put it on every console before it went out of here. Okay, as for you guys, um, I'm going to tell you right now, look. Go to College Football Revamp GitHub. Anything you want to know, okay, about this mod, you know, and, and, and you know, for... Up for updating it, like when they when they have a when they have another update or whatever, that's the place to be. College football revamp GitHub. Just Google it, you'll find it. It's not a problem. Go in there, click on Xbox 360, so on and so forth, and you know you're good to go. And as you can see, it all works. It all works just fine. Okay, done. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Because I'm not on um, yeah. Because I'm not signed in. Sorry about that. Yeah, 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 we know. Okay. Now, we'll just go back. Okay? You can do offline mode if you want. You can play now series, okay, so on and so forth. You can do team management, all that crap, Road to Glory. You can do management, ultimate team, so on and so forth. Now, uh, rosters, okay, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, your seasons and all that, you can get off college football revamp. Get up. Now, also, there's a, there's a friend of mine who's on Facebook known as Stu Douglas, okay? Now, Stu does rosters. He does all that stuff. He'll show you how to use it. I mean, he's helped a lot of people. So, you know, if you need a roster, you can hit him up, and he'll help you, okay? You know, just give him a little time to answer, because he's, he's a busy guy, but he will help you, all right? So, you know, if you need rosters, if you need that stuff, no big deal. Just hit up Stu on Facebook, and he'll help you. His name is Stu Douglas, okay? So, anyway, he needs to say, as you can see, we got our college football revamped. Everything is good. Now we're going to get out of here. All right. Now, GTA 5. 
May it rest in pieces. <laughs> yes, if you don't know this already, you know that um, Rockstar is pulling the servers for GTA 5 on the PS3 and on the Xbox 360, and also a couple other games. Now, what I find amusing is, is GTA 4 is still up. Okay, why is that? All right, you know, I mean, obviously, Rockstar has gotten tired of their shit getting hacked to pieces. Okay, especially with lobby-wide crashes and all this other stuff. It's pissing them off. And pretty much, as I've said before with, with this, you know, I mean, and someone else said too. They released these friggin' mods that uh, crash lobbies and people and pull IPs and everything else. They, that, that was going to accelerate the process. And we, know, and we all said it was going to ruin the game. Sure enough, it did. You know, that's why I really don't play GTA 5. I never did. Never really was into it, you know. I mean, but there's a lot of people that are. And it's just sad, but, you know, it is what it is. So, December, in December, that's when the server's going offline. Unless a bunch of people get together and storm Rockstar and say, Hey, mother freakers, no, don't do it. And they give you a reprieve, which I doubt. Or you can go to Rockstar Corporate Headquarters. Grab hold of one of their Serac servers, all right, and uh, make your own server, okay? So, <laughs> good luck with that, all right? So, anyway, all right, but, again, your mod menus will still work, okay? Uh, you know, you just be in story mode. It's that simple. So, we'll go ahead, Grand Theft Auto Five. start it up. Okay, now, this has got the purge menu on it. All my systems come with a trial, or you buy lifetime, if it's worth anything anymore, these days anyway, because they're taking the server offline. But if you want to mod it, you can, you know? I mean, I'm quite sure that there's going to be some people that are, go that are going to come out with a friggin' mock server for this damn thing, okay? Which is all possible. Which I can see. It, it's go it, it can happen. In fact, I've talked to quite a few developers. Uh, the thing about it, though, is, is that, you know, I mean, it's like... The original Xbox. You all know that the original Xbox, they took down Xbox 1.0 live servers back in 2010. They took it offline. A bunch of people were really super pissed. Okay, I mean seriously pissed. Well, this guy uh, came out with Infinity, which is Xbox Live Server 1.0. Okay, which is being brought back. It's in beta, beta right now and running. So, the original Xboxes, the big black ones from back in 2002, well, <laughs> they're going back online. <laughs> and there's people working on the servers and everything. It's crazy. So, it's really cool. Like I said, you, you know, these consoles, and now that's, a tw now that's a console from back in 2002. It is almost 20 years old and people are still working on this stuff, okay? And Rocky Five over there, he made Emmy Station. You know, XBMC for Xbox, so on and so forth. The Infinity, the, the guy at Infinity, okay, uh, who is making the, uh, you know, Xbox 1.0 live servers. So, like I said, you, you know, these platforms will never die. They'll just be, you know, used in a different manner, okay? Which, they're perfectly good consoles, so why not? You know, I mean, just because one game goes down doesn't mean that everything's going to go down. It's not. And people will go very, very far with these things to do what they what they want to do. So, you know, it is what it is, okay? Now, all right, here we are. So we'll go ahead here. What? No, I don't want the damn phone, you son of a bitch. All right, I'm going to walk out here. Now, GTA 5. Okay. D-pad left and X to open. Purge menu, there you go. Okay. Now we'll hit A to select. Yeah, 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 we know auto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll turn all this crap on. Okay, here we go. Good. I don't want to turn that on. We'll turn all this crap on right here, okay? Now, what we'll do here is we'll back out of here. Quick options. Improve fly mode. Okay. Teleport locations. You can teleport anywhere you want. Online players. If there's people online, it's going to show them. Recovery options. Yes, it's got recovery. Bodyguard menu. I am will never be found without my stun gun strippers. Okay, gotta have them. Wait a minute. Where's the bare breast? Damn it! There we go! Nipples! Yay! Okay? Now, 
back out of here. <coughs> yeah. All right. Weapons options. We can turn on the tank gun, the artillery gun. Uh, we'll do the grenade gun. That's a good one. And fire ammo. What the hell? Okay. And explosive ammo. And we'll back out of here. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead. We'll go to uh, misc options right here. Weather options. And we're going to back up the time so we can see a little better. There we go. Ah, yes, the sun is on the nipples. I'm loving it. Okay, now, back out of here. So on and so forth, okay? And uh, closing the menu, D-pad left and X. All right? And, yes, we got our stun gun strippers around. Yeah. Shake that butt. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We have the, the shaking leg syndrome. Are we on crack? All right, so anyway. All right, now we'll grab hold of a weapon here. Out of my way, tits. There you go. All right. We'll wait for some hapless victim. There you go. Okay, so on and so forth. They they, they always come around. Tire rolling around. Yes, everybody's going to die. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Hookers on the ground. Life is good. So on and so forth. Eh, really? So you thought you were going to get away, did you, huh? That didn't work out too well for you, did it? Didn't work out for him either. Yeah. Let me get your G-string wrapped around your freaking forehead here, okay? So anyway, as you can see, all kinds of crazy stuff going on and everything else, you know? I mean, so on and so forth. Yeah, we can run around the menu and do all kinds of crazy, stupid shit, all right? You know? We can even... we You can turn force field on and then we'll just walk by people when everybody freaking dies, cars blow up, all this crap. Where do you think you're going, huh? Where do you think you're going? Nowhere, okay? So anyway, as you can see, there you go. All right, this is what comes on the console. All right, have a blast with it. This is a trial for you. All right, so on and so forth. So anyway, we'll get out of here. All right. Now, okay. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go over copying and pasting files and folders on this thing. All right, now, if you have a file that you want to copy, all right, pretty easy. All right. Uh, you can use a USB stick there, can't wait. Formatted FAT32. Put it in your computer, formatted FAT32, copy your file over to it, alright? Stick it in the Xbox. Okay? You'll see an indicator come up stating a USB has been installed. Alright, there you go. Now, hitting the back button, we'll go back to the file manager. There you are. There's your file manager right there. Now, like I said, right window pane, left window pane, we're going to copy from right to left. Pretty easy. Alright, so we'll hit RB. We'll select the USB stick. Let's say we want to put a menu on it. They always go in the main section of the hard drive, okay? In the root of the drive. So, we'll bring this down here. And we'll go ahead. And here we go. And we'll grab a menu like this one right here, okay? X to select it. Okay, D-pad over left. Bring it over to copy. Hit A. All right, then all we got to do is this. We hit LB. HDD1, alright, here's our plugins, our infamous KV.bin and all that stuff, you know, and you can use this to copy a KV.bin over in case you get banned or something like that, alright, but anyway, there you go, paste, yes, and there it is, so we went from the USB stick to HDD1, alright, and then once you put your plugin in, you go into Dash Launch, you set it in Dash Launch under plugins, alright, reboot the console to be good to go, now, once that's done, to delete it, what you gotta do is just hit X, bring it over, and delete. Very simple, okay? Works with files, folders, games, everything. If you're familiar with a computer, copy and paste, okay? Now, all right. Now I'm gonna show you the wonders of WinSCP, which is FTP. Okay, also you can use FileZilla, also you can use your phone, and you can get on the, uh, you can get on your app store or whatever, and down, just type in FTP client, it'll find it. The thing's very versatile. So I'm going to go into how to use FileZilla, or, you know, WinSCP, I'm going to use WinSCP, for example, on a Windows machine. Okay, also, Mac has a built-in FTP program that works well with Mac as well. Okay, so, you know, I mean, very, very versatile. Alright, and then... For you hardcore Microsoft fans, okay, that love sitting around waiting for TCP connections to connect, we, we can use Xbox 360 Neighborhood, because this thing is neighborhood ready as well, alright? So, let me show you, 
okay, how to do this, okay? I'm going to grab a sip of my coffee, if you don't mind. Mmm. That's better. Okay. I need that to, I need that to be, like, intravenously pumped into my body. All right. Now, we're done here. So, we want to go ahead, and what we want to do is we want to go ahead, I'm going to remove this USB stick right now. Okay? And what we want to do is we want to grab hold of our IP address on our local area network, which happens to be 192.168.1.28. Okay? Pretty simple. All right? There you go. I hope you can see that a little better. There we are. Now, I'm going to flop over to my computer. Okay? Oh, look at that, my website. Ha-ha. <laughs> That's some xboxes.com, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Huh. Okay. Anyway. Minus out of that. Okay. Look. You can go ahead and download WinSCP. It's free. Okay. Install like you would just on Windows 10. You can also download download Xbox 360 Neighborhood SDK. Pretty easy to do too. Okay. Just Google it. YouTube it. All right. You'll see it. Xbox 360 Neighborhood. Latest SDK. Okay. That's it. But for all intents and purposes, okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use FTP. FTP is a very friendly program. It's very quick, and it works really well with this thing, okay? I like FTP. I mean, unless you're doing some crazy stuff with neighborhood, I use FTP every time because I don't have time to wait around for freaking connections and every freaking thing else under the sun, all right? Because on some it's slow, some it's fast. It's just, a, that's just, neighborhood, you know, I mean, it's nothing but modified Windows Explorer with fucking TCP connections, okay, piss me off, alright, anyway, download WinSCP for Windows, or download files for, for Linux, one or the other, okay, it doesn't matter, alright, install it on your computer, and then go to it, alright, we'll go to WinSCP, okay, very, very simple little, oh my god, you know, Ah, major application, new features, enhancements include, da ba 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 Alright, I'm going to close that out right now, for right now. I don't feel like updating it right now. Okay, now, alright, WinSCP, okay? To connect to your Xbox, we use FTP, not SFTP, but FTP. So we change that to FTP. You notice the port number is going to be 21. You're not going to have any encryption whatsoever. Now you're going to type in the host name, Okay? The host name is going to be the IP of the Xbox. All right, if you look here, okay, 192.168.1.28. Okay, very simple. So we'll type it in 192.168.1.28. Okay, port number 21. Now, the username is going to be Xbox FTP. The password is going to be Xbox FTP. All right. Now, all we got to do is just log in. It'll connect. Reading remote directory. There's your directory listing right there, just like you saw it on the onboard file manager. All right? Now, we open up HDD1. That's the only one that we're going to mess with. We'll open that up, and you will see there's your folders where all your stuff is, your games folder. If you open that up, there's all your games, and each game has its own folder with all of its uh, prospective components installed in that folder. Okay? That's the way it needs to be. All right, you got your emulator, you got your emulators, so on and so forth. Okay, and then of course your homebrew section, and there's your tools right there. So as you can see, just like a regular file structure, just like on a computer, same damn thing. Okay, you want to copy a folder over or a file over or whatever. Pretty easy to do. Grab hold of the file, drag it, drop it. And there it is, okay? Delete it. Right click. Whoop, nope, first you have to select it. Then right click, delete, okay? Done. It's gone, okay? Just like if you wanted to copy the files over for, let's say, for, let's say, uh, NCA 14. All you would do is go to the games folder right here. Go to NCA Football 14. These files right here. That's where you would go ahead and let's say you had them in a folder. You downloaded them off of the GitHub. You have them in a folder here. You select them all, okay? And then all you do is just drag them and drop them, okay? It'll overwrite all of these and you're done. Then what you do, you go back up, okay? 
go up one more then you go to your content folder and in your content folder your 16.0 folder okay you will see all of these title media IDs okay now the title media ID for this is going to be four five uh, yeah four five four one oh nine B God how do I remember this shit okay <coughs> I got way too much time on my hands all right now look open that up and where they tell you to place the DLC which is in the uh, which is in the uh, seven zero two folder right here open it up and there it is and all you would do is take that DLC and drag it and drop it and put it in there okay very very simple all right and that's how you do your updates for NCAA 14 that's how you can do updates for a lot of stuff okay it all depends on what we're how and who and uh, another thing too all right if you're wondering if you got to wonder well what the title will, will, will the media ID and everything out well it's pretty simple all right all you got to do is go to file manager in here go to HD one go to content okay 16 0 folder they're all labeled here okay so you know which one and like I said where was I 454-109-B6 and CAA for, uh, Football 14. Very simple, okay? Like I said, people complicate the hell out of it and there's no reason to, okay? So anyway, that's how you copy and paste files and folders over and everything else. And then once you're done, all right, all you got to do, and, and also your KV. Also, another thing with a KV, for the love of God, okay? Let's say you, you let's say you have to replace the KV.bin. If you notice, it's labeled KV.bin. All right. If you have KVs on your on your computer, and let's say you have multiple ones that you downloaded. All right. Well, Windows is going to automatically assign a number to that. Okay. You can have your original KV.bin. Then you can have KV open bracket number one or number two close bracket dot bin. If you grab hold of that with that number on there and put it in here. Well, guess what? The Xbox doesn't see it. Why? It's looking for KV period bin. Okay, it is literal. So therefore, it must be labeled KV dot bin. So in case you in case you have to rename it, you just go ahead, you right click on it, you hit rename, and then you rename it, and you take away the bracket, the number sign, and the other bracket. Okay, and just call it KV dot bin. Then you shut your Xbox down. You start it back up. All right, if you did it right, it's going to start up, it's going to shut down, set the KV, and restart. Pretty easy, okay? Simple. Very simple, all right? So anyway, that covers that. Now, we're going to get out of here. Yes. Now, as I said, for those of you who are rather adventurous, okay, you can get the Xbox 360 Neighborhood Package, okay, SDK, download it, install it on your computer like you would. Windows 10, stolen in administrator mode, you'll wind up with a big green blob right here, which is the neighborhood. Okay? We'll open that up. Alright? Now, this one is gone. It's already shipped out. We're going to add an Xbox 360 neighborhood. We're going to add an Xbox to the neighborhood, okay? So, we'll double click on that, and then this will come up here. The development kit wizard! Hey! Alright. Now we're going to add the friggin' Xbox. It's easy. Next, type in JTAG. It will find it if it's the only one that's on your network. If you have multiple ones, you know you got to type in the IP address of it. All right? So, 192. I'm going to type in the IP address. 192.168.1.28. That's what I think it was anyway. We'll find out. Hit next. Okay? And it did find it. Okay? Good. So, do I want to make it my default? Me? No. You? Yes. So, you click yes. I'm going to leave it at no. Next, finish. If you notice, there's our JTAG. It showed up over here, okay? There it is. All right, now we can right click on it, open Explorer, reboot screen capture, synchronize time, security set as default to Xbox 360 if you want to, delete and properties, okay? Now we'll open it up, double click. Let me drag this window over here. Yeah, this takes forever now. All right, this is what I meant by Xbox 360 neighborhood, okay? It takes it a while. Now, we're going to go HDD1 once again, okay? Volume. I'm going to double-click that. 
And of course, get used to the spinning circle of death. You're going to see it a lot on this damn thing. Alright? Why? Because it's Microsoft. And the brilliant engineers from MIT and all that that work there. That uh, haphazardly put shit together. <laughs> That's why we wind up with a spinning circle, but they made that real nice, and that way then we can take enjoyment in watching it go round and round and round, okay? Oh my fucking God! Thank you! Okay, now, here's our folders, there, and people wonder why. Well, why do you like FTP? It's pretty much self-explanatory, isn't it? Okay? And I didn't say exploratory either. Okay, now, okay, there you are. Your modified Windows Explorer with TCP extensions, okay? Now, we want to copy a file or a folder over. We'll open up another instance of Explorer. Notice how it kind of looks the same almost, don't it? Kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay? Now, we want to copy a file over. Okay, so be prepared to see jerky motions and everything else because that's what's going to happen. All right? So, let's say we want to grab a file. There we go. We'll grab something simple right here. It's a little text file. Okay? So, we select it. Drag it. Now, wait. Here comes a jerky motion. There we go. And we copy it. Okay? And with an insane amount of luck, <laughs> uh, there it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Microsoft. I love you. You guys are so awesome with with your operating systems and how you came up with all this shit. Get a fucking life, will you? And learn how to fucking program. Holy fuck. Anyway. Command line text. Okay. Just copy that file from here to here. Now, dare I delete it? Right click. Delete. Get used to the spinning circle of death. Here it comes. Ah! Okay. And yes, I want to delete it. And eventually, it'll go away. Okay? I have explained enough about neighborhood. You guys figure out the rest of it yourself. All right? I'm done with this crap. Okay? Oh, my God. All righty. Anyway. You know, people say, neighborhood's so cool. I don't see what's so fucking cool about it. <laughs> Jesus. Mary and Joseph. <laughs> Table for three. I'm going to hell. All right, now. Okay. So now we're done there. And we're done here. Okay. <laughs> I'm fucking done. <laughs> All right. Ah, waiter. Whiskey. Double. Okay. All right. Emulators, just to show you. All right. Now, as you can see, we have our little emulators. These are fun. Okay? I like fun. All right, I'll go to my favorite, right here. Just fire it up. It'll start. There you go. We'll go down to Donkey Dude. Yeah, it's the game I grew up on. <laughs> there we go. And we'll play it. Ah, yes, the monkey with nipples. Okay, now, hitting the back button, you make your selections. Hitting the start button, you play the game. Here it comes. Give it a second. It'll start. There it is. And there's a fucking Mario, huh? With the spicy sausage and the spicy little Mickey balls. There he goes, okay? Life is grand. Now, all right. Hitting the Y button, you will see it opens up a, a sub-menu here. You can adjust, you know, your graphics to whatever you want, like Super Saiyan, okay? <laughs> Goku! <laughs> Hit A. Changes the graphics a little bit, makes it a little better, smooths it out a little better. You can go to full screen. Save your slot, save state, load state, restate. I mean, reset. Yeah, restate. Yeah, okay. Load game, so on and so forth, okay? And we'll just hit beat it back out of there. And now you will notice that we have bigger graphics. Yes! Look at that. I just cleared that motherfucker. There you go. That's it. Come on. Ha ha! You missed, you fucking monkey prick. I got your bitch! Ha ha! No! Next level. So anyway, we'll just kill fucking Mario here. There you go. Okay, and if Mario's a fucking dead, ah! somebody threw him in a fucking chipper. <laughs> Where did he go? You know what's real funny? 
a lot of people well I should say this that um, everybody wonders why the suicide rate is so low in Italy and I can explain it it's kind of hard to commit suicide when you jump out of a basement window okay anyway now I'm gonna wind up with the Italian mob coming to my house fucking killing me I am Italian okay so, take it easy all right Fucking Mario and Luigi, yeah! The fucking plumbers, they're playing with their plumbing or whatever, okay? Anyway, as you can see, the emulators work just fine, okay? Hit the guide button, go back home. And take you back. Hopefully. At any given moment. There we go. <laughs> so, okay. Now that we know how to do all this crap, alright? I'm going to show you one more thing. Just because. Your classic games. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain this to you. This is a full-blown emulator of an original Xbox from back in 2002 that was put on here in a software version. Okay? It runs the original Xbox games. However, though, there are some caveats, I should say. Number one... On some games, when you open the guide button, okay, when you hit the guide button, some games will crash, okay? It happens. Not all of them, but some of them, okay? Um, you know, when, when you exit the game, it might fatal crash on you, okay? No big deal. Ain't gonna hurt nothing, all right? It's not gonna hurt a damn thing, okay? It's just gonna restart a roar and everything will be fine. You can play another classic game, no big deal, okay? Now, with this, okay, also, you can only play this in bypass mode all right bypass mode was made so you can disable the plugins from two to five on dash launch and have xpdm so then that way then you can use neighborhood or ftp or whatever to transfer files over while it's in bypass mode and not online okay you must run your classic games in bypass mode otherwise you will get a black screen what will happen is this absolutely nothing okay now this is not fun Okay, I don't want to imagine Tony Hawk. I want to be Tony Hawk. I want to see Tony Hawk. And we're not doing that right now. Because this thing got confused very quickly. Alright, there's some places in memory it doesn't, doesn't play nice with. So we have to put it in bypass mode to run a classic game. So when you want to run a classic game, you've got to put it in bypass mode. And mind you, you will not be online. You will be online locally. On your local area network, but you will not be online on the internet. You cannot play Xbox 360 games online with your friends until you take it out of bypass mode, which means simply shutting it down and starting it back up. Okay? So when you want to play a classic game, power the console off. Okay? Bypass mode. Let me show you what this is right here. Bypass mode is simply this. Power it on. Hit the eject button. Let the tray hang out. Do not push the tray in. Okay? The console is going to boot. Aurora will suck the tray back in. Alright? As you can see, it's a fast booter, too. That's the only way that my consoles go out of here. I don't like slow booting consoles. It makes me fucking nuts. I didn't like them from 2014. I don't like them now. Alright? Didn't like them from back in 2010. Before there was modified timing files, and I, oh my god. Alright. Now. Notice we're at Aurora. You notice no plugins came across the screen or anything like that. All right, which is a good thing. You also notice that when we hit the guide button and we sync the controller up, there we go. You have a gray guide right here. Okay, completely gray. All right, you don't have the fancy guide anymore. All right, so cool. Now, what's going to happen is, okay, is this. Go head on over here. Go to our classic games. Tony Hawk Underground. Now we'll select it. We'll start it. And now you can see we have our logo. Everything is good. You'll see it start up. There you are. I'm going to hit A. I'm going to bypass that screen. And then I'm going to bypass this stupid screen. And there we are. It's up to warning. Tony Hawk's Underground. There it is. And it plays just like it would on the original 2002 Xbox. Okay? pretty simple now once you're done with this game you want to play a different game or whatever different classic game or you want to get back online or whatever it's really easy 
hit the guide button and now it's going to fatal crash of course that's what it does it just does that it's not going to hurt anything you'll see it's going to start right back up and go back to aurora ain't no big deal okay there you are okay so no big deal on some games it does that you know i mean some games it will do that it's just that's just the way that it is there's nothing i can do about that you know i mean it's just that's how it is but you know you're playing a classic game you want you know they all work everything works just fine all right so on and so forth oh yeah whatever okay and sometimes it sometimes it'll give you that and it'll still play and everything will be fine and dandy okay but you know for all intents and purposes to go back see so no big deal all right well as i said now remember you're not going to get online when you're in when you're in this mode so the only way to get back online is powering the console up and powering it back on all right so listen i hope that this video was informative okay i hope i covered all the bases with you guys all right if you need anything holler at myself or holler at lorraine meadows roads on facebook okay my account is Anthony Mondello under Facebook. Or is Lorraine Meadows Roads, R-H-O-D-E-S. You can also visit our uh, Facebook business page, Tony Mondello RGH. You just search it, you'll see it, okay? You can get in contact with us there, all right? Uh, also, you can contact us through the website, okay? www.customxboxes.com, uh, all right? And uh, pretty much, uh, you know, we'll get back to you. It's not a problem, okay? We do all kinds of crazy stuff. There you go. All right. So now that you, now that I armed you with all this, okay, I want you to go have fun, enjoy this thing, okay, and remember that this thing it's you can do so many multiple things with this thing. It's not even funny. It's crazy, okay. And for cheap entertainment, it's pretty cheap and it works pretty good, okay. So you know, I mean, if you're on a budget, they work excellent for you know. For, uh, especially for like little kids and stuff like that if you're really into it if you're into modding yeah it's still mods you know i mean it's still got it's still got teeth okay but you know i mean for all intents and purposes it's a fun thing it's supposed to be fun enjoy it okay there's some people that have turned this thing into a monster and act evil with it okay which is hey that's on them okay just remember that karma is a bitch okay and it will bite you back in which it has several people already Okay, so for those of you who want to do evil stuff and screw with people and everything else, yeah, sure, you can, all right, but that's all on you, all right, this thing's supposed to be fun, enjoy it, okay, that's what it's there for, have fun with it, have a blast with it, all right, and uh, I hope that you all have a great day, you all take it easy, I'm going to holler at you later, I got consoles to build, take care of yourselves, be safe.